Hi guys, Dr. Andre Pinesett, the pre-med project expert, and today I'm answering one of your questions, and a student asked me, how do medical schools evaluate multiple retakes of the MCAT? So you took the MCAT more than once, how are medical schools gonna score you? And what I'll say is it really depends on your schools that you're applying to. So at the end of the day, what I would do is I would go to MSAR and see if the information is there. If it's not in the MSAR um, guide, then I would call the schools that you're most interested in and ask them how they evaluate MCAT scores. But essentially there's a couple different ways they can do it. Uh, the most common way is they take your highest score and they use that score and the sections that made up that score to be your top MCAT test. I think that's a little kind of unfair because if you take the test four times, I mean, I guess you're bound to get a good score, right? So what I think is a more fair way, which is what some students do, is that they will average your MCAT scores. Right? So that way they take into account if you've taken it 15 times and gotten super low scores, they're not just rewarding you for finally getting it right. So um, schools can do it in a multitude of different ways. But what I'll say is the surest way to make sure you can get into medical school is just to score well. Because right? if you are taking the test a couple times and now you've got a score, right? keep improving. Get the score. And what you don't want to do, and this is, I guess, the more important thing I want to say. Actually, this is most, the most important thing in this video is... If you have a score and it's borderline, say you're like at a 505, you're like, oh man, I just want to get to 508. Don't mess around and take it again and get a lower score and be applying to a school where they say, oh, we take your last MCAT test. Because that's also another option. As you can imagine your frustration, if you would have made their cutoff at 505, you retook it, you got a 502, and now you weren't a qualified candidate for the medical school. So be very careful about how greedy you're gonna get and make sure you have a plan to actually score higher. Does that make sense to everybody? I hope you guys understand this. If you have confusions about it, leave a comment in the box. But what I'll say is, is medical schools will look at your MCATs in a variety of ways. You wanna check with them, but the biggest thing you can do is make sure that you score as well as you can, as soon as you can on the MCAT. So the first time you go to prep, make sure you're ready and do well. If it doesn't go well, then make sure you're ready the second time. If it doesn't go well the second time, make sure you're ready the third time. On and on and on, but just get better. You wanna take the MCAT as few times as possible and get as high scores as you can. So focus there and not don't have backup plans like, oh, I can retake it. No, go in hard one time, knock it out the park and be done with it. Cause you don't wanna go through the hassle having to study a second time. And if you need help preparing for your MCAT, I want you to check out my free webinar, Three Secrets for Dominating the MCAT Without an Expensive Prep Class and Without the Stress. You can register right below in the link and check that out. Thank you guys. That is it for this episode of Dominate Pre-Med. Show me some love by commenting in the box below and taking a second to like this video. Be sure to visit premedproductivity.com to learn more about my empowering courses, pre-med coaching, and live events near you. While you're there, grab a copy of my free ebook, check out my blog, and sign up for a free webinar. Being in pre-med doesn't have to be filled with uncertainty and stress. You have greatness inside you. Let the pre-med productivity expert show you how to unlock it so you can dominate pre-med and get into the medical school of your dreams. I'll see you next time.